All right. In lieu of time, we are going to get started, but everything I say, I will throw into the chat as well. Welcome to the Michigan Association for College Admissions Counseling and Virtual College Fair. So important that you're here with us. This part is really important. If you have questions for any of our panelists at any time, please utilize the Q&A button that's either at the top or bottom of your screen. That Q&A button is going to be the only way that you're able to get an immediate answer throughout this 45 minute session. Again, our panelists cannot see or hear you. So that Q&A is a great way to get a uh, question answered during this session. You can sign up for more sessions, the same place that you signed up for this one. And a recording of this, including everything in the Q&A, the chats, and of course the video and audio will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Michigan. And I will put that into the chat as well. And we are going to get things kicked off with Kalamazoo College. Well, hello everyone from wherever you're at in the state and beyond. My name is Marcus Johnson. I am Assistant Director of Admission at Kalamazoo College. Uh, give me a moment. I'm going to put my uh, a quick screen of information on the screen for you folks to take a look at. Um, so uh, while I'm talking about Kalamazoo College, it's also worth noting that in the top right corner, there's a QR code if you have a smartphone you could take a picture of it and it will take you to our uh, visit page where you can see some of our visit options, um, especially for those of you who are thinking about visiting us over the next month. Uh, and then as we start to move into June, uh, within the next couple of weeks, you're gonna see some of our summer options available too. Uh, we do have on-campus tours available. Uh, and of course, there are also a lot of virtual options and uh, ways for you to interact with your admission counselor from your respective territory. But let's talk for a little bit about Kalamazoo College. We are a small uh, liberal arts college. We're a little bit under uh, of 1,500 students. Um, sorry, uh, so we're a little bit under 1,500 students. We're uh, right in Southwest Michigan, right? That puts us about halfway between Chicago and Detroit. And we're right next to Western Michigan University. Um, so, uh, most of our students are receiving some sort of need-based aid or merit aid. We definitely understand that for a small liberal arts college, the cost of attendance is going to be really high. Um, but we always want to make sure that we're, we're able to offset that with a lot of financial aid options. Um, we're also test optional, and we have been since 2015. Um, and uh, we're a member of the Colleges That Change Lives nonprofit organization. So that's a group of about 40, 44 uh, liberal arts colleges that are known for the kinds of ways that they engage students in liberal arts education experiences. Um, so uh, for us, we usually engage students in the liberal arts college experience through something called the K-Plan. So the K-Plan is a set of all the expectations that we want our students to have of us as a college um, by the time they graduate. So we wanna make sure that folks are able to engage in these four parts of a curriculum. First, we want the cur or curriculum to be rigorous and flexible. Students at Kalamazoo College don't declare their major until the winter term of their sophomore year. We have 30 majors, 22 minors and 15 concentrations. Uh, so that's a lot of options for folks. Um, we uh, also um, make it so that we don't have a lot of core requirements. So uh, you do have to declare a major, gain proficiency in a world language, a couple other items, but outside of that, we don't have the same core requirements that you would normally see at a state or regional university. Gives you a lot more flexibility for college to be the place where you discover what academic interests you have. Um, we also have a lot of options for study abroad. Uh, so about 70% of our students go on study abroad, usually during the junior, their junior year. And these are usually extensive, immersive study abroad experiences. All the courses that people take on study abroad transfer overs to help them graduate. Um, and we're also really interested in experiential learning, making sure that we're helping you build your resume so that by the time you graduate, you're able to move on to bigger and better things. About two thirds of our students go directly into full-time employment after they graduate. We also have another large chunk of our students who will eventually go on to get graduate degrees. Uh, and within about nine years of graduating, about 90% of our students would have earned some form of a graduate degree. 
Uh, that also leads me to the final part of the CAVE plan, which is independent research. Uh, it's really important for us. Our students are able to find research opportunities throughout their college experience. And that's really the way that you just discover what you really inter are interested in. And you learn how to ask questions and use critical thinking and to develop those skills while you're a student on campus. Um, so uh, in addition to those four elements, uh, I, al I also want to talk a little bit about how we bring people into our campus community. I already mentioned that we are test optional. We are also common application exclusive. Um, and so when we take a look at your application, the main question that we're asking is how successful do we think you're going to be on our campus based off of what we see in your high school experience or your experience before coming to K. So that means we're taking a look, a look at your uh, transcripts from uh, before coming to K. We're also taking a look at the quality of the writing sample that you submit to us. And we're also taking a look at the list of activities that you give us. And we're using that to come, up, come away with a more holistic sense of who you are as a person and how this college uh, campus community would best benefit you. So uh, again, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop those in the Q&A section. Um, and also make sure that you're checking out the visit options by taking, by, uh, taking a picture of that QR code. I'll also drop the actual URL in the Q&A feature, in the chat feature so that you folks will have that available too. Thank you very much. And you all have a great afternoon and enjoy your college search. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Saginaw Valley State University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Stanley. I am the Assistant Director of Regional Operations with Saginaw Valley State University. Um, so six minutes, I'm gonna be super quick with this. Hopefully we can go over lots of information and ask lots of questions with all of the college reps that are here today. So we are smack dab in the middle of the Tri-City area of Bay City, Saginaw and Midland. We're about 20 minutes from each city center. So for any of you who have ever vacationed up north and taken Highway 75 to get up north, you've probably driven right past our campus. We are considered a little bit more of a rural university, but we're only about a four minute drive to the local Target, Myers, the local mall, and lots of different attractions within the area. So Saginaw Valley State University, we actually have over 100 different undergraduate and graduate degree programs that fall under five different categories. We have our College of Arts and Behavioral Sciences, Business and Management, Education, Health and Human Services, and also Science, Engineering, and Technology. So all of our degree programs are going to fall under those five categories. Um, some of our most popular programs would include uh, like criminal justice, management or accounting, um, early childhood education and secondary education, in addition to special education, nursing, pre-health professions, occupational therapy and social work, and then also mechanical and electrical engineering. Um, we do have a couple new programs, including environmental science, and um, we do have an actuarial science minor that we rolled out this past year. So our students are super excited to be taking those new programs that we have. Um, so we actually have 84% of our students on average every year that participate in experiential learning. It is very important that you focus on in addition to your education, you need to gain experience. And I guarantee it's going to be a common theme you're going to hear from every admissions rep presenting tonight that you need to participate in internships, externships, co-ops, whatever it may be, so that you are a marketable, per marketable person when you graduate from college and enter the workforce and start paying those taxes. Um, we do have one of the largest BSN and BSW programs in the state as well. So we have actually 96 seats a semester that we um, fill up with for our students in the nursing program. So we are a part of the Division II GLIAC Conference for our athletics for anyone who might be interested in getting recruited to um, compete at the university level. Um, as soon as your um, sophomore year has completed and you are a junior in high school or for my juniors, you can be working with coaches right now to see if um, your skills can be added to the teams that we have. Um, outside of athletics though, it's really important that you get involved in student organizations Student life leads to success as far as getting involved in extracurricular activities, 
the happier you are at a university's campus, the more successful you're going to be with your academics. So make sure you're getting involved. If it's not athletics, maybe you're joining the Zombie Defense Council or the Squirrel Watching Club, Cake Club, Pie Club. Uh, maybe you're a part of our Christian organization that we have. There's so many different student groups that I can guarantee you're going to find at least a handful of people who have some interests that are similar to yours. So Saginaw Valley, we are actually ranked number one in the nation amongst public universities for best on-campus housing and housing experience. And there's two pieces to that. Um, so the first part is facilities. So we actually don't have traditional dorms. They're all apartment style, whether that is a studio apartment all the way up to a four or five bedroom apartment. There's lots of amenities included like laundry, air conditioning, cable, Wi-Fi and hardline internet. Freshmen can have cars on campus. Um, so the facilities are outstanding. And then there's that residential life piece that I was talking about before. And if you can afford to live on campus, I highly encourage you exploring that option because there's not many times in your life where you can live in a community where everyone's about the same age, going through that same life transition of going away um, and going to college for the first time. So cost is a huge piece to choosing where you're gonna be going to school, at least for a lot of the students that are looking into Saginaw Valley. And we are actually the most affordable public university in the state of Michigan when it comes to cost of tuition. But you always need to ask what outside of tuition, what in addition do I have to pay for so I can start planning my finances? So with tuition, meals, housing, and books and supplies, you're still looking at about a $22,000 investment. But universities do a great thing as far as providing opportunities for students to earn money to help cover the cost of their education. So our scholarships, they're guaranteed when you apply for admission. They start at a 3.0 GPA. They're all test optional. The only one that you're going to see on this board is our Academics um, Excellence Scholarship, and that's for if you have a really high ACT or SAT score. But um, you're going to be rewarded for your hard work that you've put in for the past couple of years in your high school. Um, there's also need-based aid. So when you submit your FAFSA, you want to make sure that um, you're sending it to the universities that you're serious about because there might be some opportunity grants or like our cardinal commitment for any family that has a gross household income of 50000 or less. We can guarantee that your tuition is going to be covered in some way from the university. So you want to make sure that you are sending your FAFSA out to us and that opens in October every year. And then we also have a private scholarship application. So there's lots of ways for you to earn money to help pay for school. I did wanna let you guys know that we are test optional for admission. So as long as you have a 2.75 cumulative GPA or higher, you will be admitted to the university. Um, if you are below that, we can ask for like an essay, maybe a couple letters of recommendation, and we're gonna do a little bit more of a thorough evaluation of your application. Um, as far as campus tours go, we are open for tours. So come visit, we look forward to seeing you soon. All right, great, thank you. Next up we have Grand Valley State University. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Tibby. As mentioned, I'm an admissions counselor from Grand Valley State University, so representing the other valley in the state. I'm also joined by my colleague, Libby Bunnell. She's hiding out in the Q&A, so make sure you drop any questions that you may have in there. She's at the ready to answer for you. So I'm gonna start by just telling you a little bit about us. So GVSU, we are a four-year public university with our main campus headquartered in Allendale, Michigan. So if you're not as familiar, you can see our little GV logo on the map there. We're located in the heart of West Michigan. So if you wanna take a study break and have a beach day, you can easily do that in about a 15, 20 minute drive. Or if you wanna go check out a concert or other events happening in the city of Grand Rapids, we're equidistant away from that as well. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the community, college, small town, but then you also get the city life. We're also pretty close to Lansing, the state capital and other major metro areas such as Detroit and even Chicago. So at GVSU, between our undergraduate and graduate degree programs, we have 143 degree options for you. So that can range anywhere from philosophy and cybersecurity to wildlife biology, and even some combined degree programs such as statistics and biostatistics, where you can earn a bachelor's and a master's degree on average in less time and therefore for less money than you would if doing it separately. We are also a liberal arts institution as some of the others on this panel. So that means our general education curriculum is required for all students. 
but this is a great playground to explore your options, explore topics and subject areas that you might not even know exist and you're really passionate about. But it can also be very complimentary if you already know what major or career path you wanna go down to, because it's gonna give you timeless skills that can be applied to any and every career or profession. In colleges, more than just taking classes and you know earning that degree, it's about figuring out who you are. And so that's where our student life comes in. So with hundreds of clubs and organizations to get involved in or even make your own, there's something for everyone. So now that I've told you a little bit about who we are, what we create is the Laker effect. So all of our students, that's when they graduate, they go out around the world, around the country and do really exciting and amazing things. Um, so we are nationally recognized in some pretty prestigious publications. Our most notable programs, I would say, are within business, engineering, health professions and education and all the kind of corresponding specialties within those areas of study. And as you can see by some of the stats on the screen, our students are highly sought after and really successful in these areas based on their placement rates and their success rates on you know, additional exams and certifications. So it's always fun to see where our students land. Similarly, at GVSU, we believe that learning is a lifelong investment. I know college is a big investment, so we wanna make sure it's worth your while. It's a little cheesy, but we call ourselves Laker for a lifetime, so we truly mean it. So we want to make sure that you're ready for the skills of today and tomorrow, because if anything that the past year and a half or so has taught us is that you got to be ready to pivot and adapt. So we want to make sure you're ready for that. So again, we place a strong emphasis on experiential learning, getting you outside of the classroom, getting your hands dirty, literally or metaphorically speaking. So study abroad, service learning, faculty research, or even you conducting your own research as well. And for lifelong learning, we mean it. We put our money where our mouth is. So all GVSU graduates have a Laker Lifetime Learning Account Fund or L3, which is $1,000 set aside for all graduates. So if you need to come back, earn additional credit, you know, a certification or a badge to upskill or reskill, that's there for you when you need it. Speaking of money, um, on average, you're looking at about 22,000 annually for a Michigan resident in terms of cost. But cost varies for everyone, you know, depending on your need, award offered, but this is just a quick snapshot. And one thing I will say about GVSU that I appreciate is that there's minimal fees. So all of the support resources, tutoring, counseling, um, even recreational center, athletic games, that's all included within your tuition. So you're not really gonna get any surprise bills on there. Now for the admissions process for fall 2021 and fall 2022, so for any juniors, we are test optional, meaning you can submit an ACT or SAT score for admission, or you cannot. Even if submitted, we'll usually only use it if it's beneficial for you. But overall, we adopt a holistic application review process. So we're gonna look at everything. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for potential for you to be successful. So we're gonna look at your coursework, you know, your overall performance and anything else that you share with us that you think is important. Now, in terms of scholarships, when you apply to GVSU, your GVSU application is also your application for merit scholarships that you may qualify for. So make sure you apply and are admitted by December 31st for consideration for those merit scholarships. We also have additional scholarships within our My Scholarships database. So once you've been admitted, you can log into this portal and search hundreds of other opportunities for additional funds to help you know, manage that big investment into your future. And lastly, I'll note that we are open for business as well. So if you wanna come visit campus, either on your own, you know, with the support of a current student as your tour guide, or if you wanna visit virtually, we have all of those options and even more. So make sure you check out our website or feel free to contact us directly and we can set up a visit option for you or talk a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. But that's all I have. So thank you and look forward to hearing from you. All right, thank you. Uh, next up we have Mid-Michigan College. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Here we go. 
or not. There you are. You're going to hear some really wonderful recommendations. You already are hearing some wonderful recommendations by some very bright people. I learned a long time ago to listen to uh, people that are smarter than I am, and you're hearing from a number of them today. So if you're a high school student here today, good for you. So listen up. And if you're a guidance counselor today, good for you too. Thanks for doing what you do. Take care of your own social and emotional well-being as well. First detail for me, first recommendation is on the screen in front of you. If you're a high school senior, I know it's challenging. High school junior, there again, I know it's challenging. Keep looking, keep listening, keep learning, keep asking questions. If you're not clear, we're here to help. I just put my email address in the chat. You'll hear it again or you'll see it again as we go through this. Happy to help with you uh, figuring out this pathway as you're moving forward. And understand everybody in this today is rooting for you. We're not competing against each other. We're rooting for you and we're wanting you to find that finish line and we're wanting you to bust through it first. There's 28 community colleges in Michigan. We happen to be one of them. We're the other Lakers besides Grand Valley and LSSU. And uh, I wanna tell you a little bit about community colleges in general and mid in particular. Two main campuses, first campus is up in Harrison, quaint rustic charm, been there about 50 years. I haven't, but we've been there about 50 years. And then we've got strong presence in Mount Pleasant. Most folks are aware of that. When they ask me, where's Mid-Michigan College? I'm tempted to say, well, it's in the middle of Michigan, of course. We've got uh, proximity to uh, CMU and therefore most of our students upon transferring out end up over at CMU. But we've got a large number of them that head to SVSU, a good number head over to Ferris and a good number head across the rest of the state as well. Two campus locations, like I mentioned, wanted you to get a shot of each. And then we've got a strong presence online and some hybrid courses. A lot of students have moved in this direction and we were already kind of kind of ahead of the curve with that and uh, have just built upon what we've offered as far as online and hybrid coursework. Admissions requirements, all 28 community colleges were accessible, open admissions, meaning, well, pretty much everybody that applies gets in. Happy to help you with that process. Notice too that uh, there's no cost in the application fee and we're not looking at test scores or GPA requirements. Well, what does that mean? Let me tell you a little bit more about it. Our freshman class, this is the, the most accurate data I have. Last fall was a little bit of an aberration. So 2019, on average, the freshman came in with about a 975 SAT score or about a 3.0, meaning about half the students came in 3.0 or higher, about half of them came in 2.9 or lower. We work well with that broad spectrum because we have to. When a student asks me, what can I study at mid or can I get started at mid? My answer to them, it's not hyperbole. You can start about a thousand pathways at mid. Can you finish them all? No, certainly not. There are some great institutions to transfer out to. For example, teaching. There's an excellent College of Ed at Grand Valley. There's an excellent College of Ed at Michigan State. There's an excellent College of Ed at SVSU, et cetera. You'll notice a lot of these programs that we've got are built specifically for transfer. But there's a number of programs that students start and finish with us and charge into life. This is the point where I'd ask you to hold up one finger so that you remember there's a number of one-year pathways, kind of the meat and potato. Preferably, you're not holding up the middle finger, but these pathways, they're built for students that say, I want to get in and get out and make a better living. Skilled trades, yeah, we're very good at these. A lot of folks used to wrongly presume this is what all the community colleges were about. No, we're good at it. We've, we've got a large number of offerings. Keep learning the menu. That's important. As you're going forward and you're listening today, keep learning the menu and what your options are. It's really good to make informed decisions. If I could only show you, show you one slide today, I probably would have gone to this one. It's important because 
every student that applies to MID, the first thing that happens is they are connected with a mentor. It's that mentor's job to do pretty much 40 hours a week what we're doing right now to help you and inform you and lead you to the other resources that are available to you at the college. If you presume, well, it's a community college, so it's gonna be lacking in any kind of student life, I'd ask you to take a second look or look a little more deeply. There's a number of ways to get connected and regardless of your choice for post-secondary, endeavor to be connected. Most all of the reps you're hearing from today would agree, the students that find connections and make connections are the ones that ultimately are the most successful. The numbers you're seeing on top, there's a range there for cost because it's dependent upon if you're in district or out of district for mid-Michigan Community College. And you might be in district for your local community college. It's certainly something you'd wanna take a look at. In the end, our students save anywhere from $11,000 to $16,000 on average. I often encourage them, put that money away if you do intend to head over to university so that you can make a really good investment that way. Many students do the things that you see at the bottom of the screen there with the money that they've saved. My oldest son, he went and bought a bass boat and went fishing. Either way, again, I'm happy to help. Contact me anytime. I try to get back to you within 24 hours. If you call me, I'm happy to call back. If you email, happy to return the email as well. Thanks for your time today. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, University of Michigan, Dearborn. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you today. My name is Shana Jensen, and I'm an admissions counselor at the University of Michigan, Dearborn. And I'm really excited to share some information with you today and hopefully get you excited about UVM Dearborn as well. So just to start out, get the slide real switch, there we go. Um, we were founded in 1959, actually as a gift from the Ford Motor Company. They gifted the university about 200 acres of land and that's still where our university is today. We are also part of the U of M tradition. And by saying this, I just mean that you earn the same U of M degree that you would get at any three of our campuses. So Flint, Ann Arbor, or Dearborn. And we're really proud to be part of the University of Michigan and give you that Michigan degree on a campus that's committed to making a difference in the Metro Detroit community. Students have the ability to make really strong personal connections with their professors on our campus because we have really low class sizes as well. About 71% of our classes have less than 30 students. So you really don't have to worry about getting lost in a large 300 person lecture hall. Lastly, I wanna mention that U of Dearborn has four academic colleges, and these are what contain our over 120 degree programs. So when students apply to U of Dearborn, you select a major which belongs to one of these four colleges, and then upon admissions, you are admitted directly into that college. And when taking a look at our college campus, it's comprised of a really diverse and inclusive student body. We have about 9,200 students on our campus, a majority being undergraduates. Of those students, we have about 47% as transfer students, 38% are first generation college students, and 75%, which is almost all of our students, choose to work while they attend classes. We really pride ourselves on having students with such a hardworking nature. We also found that 91% of our 2018 graduating class are achieving their goals after graduation. This means that 73% of these students accepted employment once they graduated, 8% attended graduate school, and 4% went on to do an internship, volunteering, or co-op experiences. And we have offices on our campus, such as Career Services and the Talent Gateway, that really help ensure our students know how to explain that Michigan difference and how their University of Michigan Dearborn degree prepared them for their future career. I just wanna show this slide really quickly. This is a list of some of the resources we offer that help students become successful. Things like free tutoring, supplemental instruction, career planning, various learning centers, things like that. Now, upon graduation, you also join the same pool of alumni as all three of our campuses. We currently have about 630,000 living alumni and they are a great resource for students as you look for opportunities job shadowing, internships, even post-graduation employment opportunities. And for anyone not from the area, 
UM Dearborn is in right downtown Dearborn, which means we're close to multiple restaurants, theaters, parks, museums, shopping. They are specifically right by the Henry Ford Museum in Greenfield Village, which is super cool. Outside of Dearborn, we're a 15 minute drive from downtown Detroit and about a 35 minute drive from Ann Arbor. And being a U of M Dearborn student, you do get the same discounts on Ann Arbor athletics, which does include football and basketball. There's even a shuttle that will take you there. So you don't have to worry about parking. If you're trying to go to the big house on a Saturday. U of M Dearborn also has the lowest annual cost among the 15 public universities in Michigan. This is nearly $3,400 below the state average. Our students are paying less upfront, and this means that they're also graduating with less debt than their peers. We also have a great return on investment. We are currently listed as the fourth highest starting salary with about $3,100 above the state average, and 10 years after, we have the third highest salary with it being about $130,000. And this just really shows how we help our students and push them to achieve their goals not only right after they graduate, but also providing them with an education that's gonna last. I do wanna to quickly touch point on our admissions criteria. Each application is reviewed individually by an admissions counselor such as myself or someone else in the office. We'll take a look at a student's high school transcript to see their academic performance. So this includes the classes you choose to take and the trend of your grades. We do not ask for letters of recommendations or essays, but really only use your GPA and your test scores to make that admissions decision. When looking at the average GPA, about the middle 50% of students fall between a 3.4 to a 3.9. And keep in mind that if your high school does provide a weighted GPA, we will use that for your decision. Now the average SAT score is about an 1180 and the average ACT is about a 24. These scores will be optional for the 2021 and 2022 undergraduate application as well. So if you're looking at these scores and you're a little worried you don't fall in the ranges, please don't. We admit students above and below those. Please just apply if you're interested. And just to wrap up today, because I threw a lot of information at you, um, really the three top reasons I think you should consider UM Dearborn or look more into it is you'll earn that Michigan degree as a Dearborn Wolverine, you're committing to a really bright future by earning that degree that's well known and respected globally. You get to wear the maize and blue and these colors really reflect the Wolverine pride and represent a university that continues to inspire and motivate and create champions. We're also committed to affordability. Nearly 90% of our incoming students are offered some form of financial aid. U of M students are graduating with the lowest amount of student loan debt among the 15 public universities in Michigan. And lastly, we really offer an engaging environment. Our average, our average class size is about 26 students. We provide class settings that foster a culture where professors know students by name and give them an opportunity to become a difference maker. We have about 150 student organizations and hundreds of co-op and internship opportunities so students can get involved outside of the classroom. So I wanna thank you again so much. If you have any questions, please throw them in the Q&A. Me and my coworker are in here and we will be happy to answer them and go blue. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have Michigan State University. All right, hello everybody. I am just gonna pull up my screen and we will get started. Okay, here we go. So hello everyone, my name is Riley Van Pelt and I am an in-state admissions counselor at Michigan State University. I want to thank you all for coming out this evening. I am joined by my colleague, Tanya Kurzawa, who can answer any questions that you have in the Q&A tool, but we'll dive right into the presentation. So Michigan State is one of the largest universities in the nation with just about 50,000 students, mostly comprised of undergraduates, and we bring in about 82 to 8,300 freshmen in every year. Now, the great thing about having such a large class is we have an incredibly diverse class as well. So we bring in students from every county in the state of Michigan, every state in the United States, and from over 130 different countries. And I'm an alumni of Michigan State, and during my time, I got to meet students from all over the world. So it's amazing that you can come to East Lansing, Michigan, and be surrounded by so many different perspectives. Our students are studying in over 200 areas and 17 degree granting colleges, and even have the option of joining one of our three residential colleges. Um, it's essentially a living learning community where you're taking classes and having all your academic resources in the same building that you're living. So we have Wyman Briggs for students interested in the pre-med or STEM routes. We have James Madison for students interested in pre-law or political science related topics. And then we have the Residential College of Arts and Humanities for students interested in arts, humanities, social justice, or community engagement. 
the great thing about Michigan State is that no matter what you want to study, we have high, highly ranked programs in many different subjects. So we have top programs in business, engineering, nursing, communications, psychology, and so many different more. So no matter what you do, there's a lot of great options for programs. Now, one of the things I like to highlight that's been kind of highlighted in previous presentations so far is that out the learning that you do outside the classroom is very important. And Michigan State really sets you up to get that hands-on experience so that you can learn what you want to do and kind of what you like and what you don't like, which can really help you get a job, which is getting a job after college and starting a career is Michigan State's biggest goal for you. So you can get involved and build your own adventure outside the classroom with entrepreneurship, undergraduate research, education abroad, or by joining one of our 900 student organizations. So to highlight a few of these, undergraduate research, we're one of the top 100 undergraduate re research institutions in the entire world. So we have students doing groundbreaking research in technology, health-related fields, and many other areas. We've even had a group of undergraduate students develop a COVID test that's been being used all over Michigan and the United States and a few states in the United States. So it's really cool that you have the opportunity to do research and really make an impact as early as your freshman year at Michigan State. I'm um, going from there in most years, um, this being a pandemic year, we have 275 study abroad programs offered on all seven continents. So yes, if you do want to study abroad in Antarctica, that is an option. And they can go from one week all the way to an academic year. And there's usually several different study abroads for every major that we offer at Michigan State. So just really cool opportunities there. And then finally, we have over 900 student organizations. So whether you want to get involved with something you've already been doing in high school or you want to try something completely new like underwater hockey or Quidditch or anything like that, you can do that at Michigan State. So there's a lot of opportunities to get involved on campus. We really like to set our students up for success. So we're very proud that we have a 95% job, 95 job placement rate, which means that 95% of our students will be placed in, in a job or go on to graduate school within six months of graduating Michigan State. Now, a lot of people will ask a little bit about the financial side of Michigan State. So if you look at the left side of the screen, this is our cost for in-state tuition, but this does not include anything that would have to do with your individual financial aid packages. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about breaking down the cost and how you can finance your education at Michigan State. So you can finance your education through financial aid, merit-based scholarships, or even by doing part-time work. So I encourage every single student, no matter where you go to college, after you apply to that college, be sure to fill out the FAFSA, the free application for federal aid, because roughly 70% of students who do fill it out will receive some sort of financial aid in the form of either loans, grants, or scholarships. And we award just about a billion dollars in financial aid. So that's the first thing you need to do, fill out that FAFSA. From there, the moment that you submit your application to Michigan State, you'll automatically be considered for all of our merit-based scholarships. So you don't have to do a separate application process. You just have to apply and you'll be considered for those. And then if you look at the additional websites below, those are additional scholarship websites where you can find other scholarships outside of our Office of Admissions. And I always encourage students treat the scholarship hunt like it's a part-time job because it's always good to see where you can get a little bit of money here, get a little money here, and it can really pay off in the long run. Going from there, a lot of students ask, what does Michigan State look for when we're applying? So a few things that we do is we do a grade review from the time that you're a freshman to the time that you're a junior. We like to either see that you're consistently getting better every year or consistently getting very good grades. Uh, GPA wise, we don't have an exact criteria, but our middle 50% of students who graduated or who started in the fall of 2020 came with between a 3.5 and a 4.0. But keep in mind, we do still take students who are below that criteria as well. We also look at academic rigor. So if you're challenging yourself with AP, IB, honors, or dual enrollment classes, we take that into consideration. We read every student's essay. So I've read thousands of essays. And the whole point of that is to highlight yourself as a student and tell us things that your GPA or test score cannot tell us. Speaking of test score, we are also test optional as well. So you do not have to submit a test score to be considered and you will not be negatively affected. So you'll be considered for all of our merit-based scholarships. Um, most important deadline for you to know is uh, during your senior year, you have to apply by November 1st. If you apply by November 1st, which is our early action deadline, you will be considered for maximum scholarship consideration for all of our scholarships. So always apply early. If you apply early, you'll also receive a decision by January 15th as well. So if there's one thing you take away from today, make sure to apply by November 1st. And then just to wrap things up from here, 
Um, we are offering some limited tour options. So look at our um, visitation website, check your MSU email and you can learn more from there. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask us in the chat. And I know Tanya posted some information below to find your counselor. So thank you guys again and go green and go white. All right, thank you. Uh, if I could have all of the panelists come back, turn their cameras on in the same order that we, if I get my, my screen to share, there you go. Uh, same order that we presented, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Starting with Kalamazoo. All right, well, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take it up. Uh, I always encourage folks that before you shoot off an email or ask a question of an actual person, it will save you a lot of time and energy and frustration to like see if the answer to your question is actually online. Um, so say, for instance, if you have a question about how many, uh, what majors are offered at a particular college or university, yeah, you can ask an admission counselor and we can try to list off all the majors and minors that we offer at college and we will miss a few. Uh, or you can go on, or you can just type that into your search browser and you can find the answer to that. Um, same thing for financial aid, same thing for cost of attendance. Um, see how much that stuff you have accessible online. Same thing with academic majors and departments too. Um, and, uh, and also with visit options. See if uh, there are colleges who are offering visit options. Um, it'll just save you so much time if you look online first. Um, my biggest piece of advice is finding the best fit. So if you are juniors right now, I like to take out an Excel worksheet and my columns are the universities that I'm researching and applying to. My rows are my deal breakers. So cost, scholarships, program, what's the food like? Can I have a car? You name it, all those random deal breakers. Um, and then as you're going and doing your research online, visiting campuses, maybe you're hearing back on your admission status, you're taking notes and you're probably gonna find a university that's the best fit for you. And that's where you're gonna thrive, not just survive, but be successful and become an active member of the Alumni Association and come home every year for homecoming. That's the ultimate goal. Um, so find the best fit. Um, I'm gonna go off of Marcus's a little bit and take it a next step. So definitely do your research, you know, kind of explore what schools have to offer to you. But then also all of us admissions counselors here and all of our colleagues, we're not gatekeepers, you know, just to admit or deny you. We're here to help you navigate the whole college application and search process. So if you can't find your answer, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our job is truly to help you navigate this and find the best fit for you. So I know it can be a lot navigating, you know, FAFSA, deadlines, do I have everything in? So just check in with us and we're happy to help. Okay. Uh, anybody that knows me even a little bit knows I'm not a negative person, but I think this is an important detail. And this is a rough national statistic. About half the students that go away to college in the fall, they won't end up returning to that same college the following fall. There's a lot of reasons for that. Many things come into play and it's very often not money. So I guess my suggestion is be sure and try it on for size. Like I said earlier, listen to people that are smarter than you are and try it on for size. Make a visit. You get excused absences as a senior, go use those. Ask people, ask people that are there, not just the college reps, but ask people that are there. Find out what's likely going to be the best fit for you. Yeah, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of everyone's answers. They're really good. I think the biggest piece of advice I was given that I love to share is really don't compare yourself to others through this whole process. You might have friends or peers that are applying to colleges that you're not applying to or vice versa. And it really is about fit. I remember someone telling me to pick a college that feels like home, which sounds so silly because it's not your home, but really just means when you hear all of us talk and you go to college presentations, taking into account what extracurriculars they have, um, the dorms they live in, the food, like Michelle was saying, all those things are so important on top of academics, of course, but you really want somewhere that you're going to feel comfortable and you're really going to succeed. 
and you're gonna love to like call your second home even after you graduate. And so far, everyone has given great advice so far. My advice is working off a lot of everybody else is to prepare early and get multiple perspectives to find your best fit. So make sure you know all of your early action deadlines for all the colleges you want to apply for, because that's where you can get your maximum scholarship consideration. And then you can take time to plan out the next steps, like filling out the FAFSA and doing everything you can do to prepare. And then finally, it's always good to schedule an appointment with your admissions counselor. I know my colleague Tanya posted our specific link, but most other schools have ways to contact your admissions counselor. And also speak to students too, because it's always great to hear their perspectives and what they've gone through. And it's just a really good way to help find your overall fit. So I'll just leave it with, I wish you guys all the best of luck and reach out if you have any questions. All right, fantastic advice from our experts, our panelists. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Or if you're watching this recording, thank you so much for watching this. As you leave here, if you are watching live, there is a four question survey that will appear. Uh, very helpful if you fill that out. You can sign up for more sessions, same place that you sign up for this one. And again, a recording is available. I put that link in the chat, but it's at our StriveScan website. Best of luck to the parents and the students out there. Thank you again to our uh, admissions counselors, our, our experts here, uh, the panelists. I know this is an incredibly busy time, so thank you again. Best of luck to, again, the audience out there. And thank you again to our experts, our panelists, and have a good night. All right, see you later, everybody. Bye.